I have seen so many bizarre videos trying to answer this question. It's, it's really easy if you just remember that geometry in the SAT is a limited menu. So if we get something weird, try to remember what's, what items are on the menu. We have the reference chart we can always use, but also there's a few other things that aren't on that. And so when you we get something weird, just try to run through the list of things that you know are on the test. It's going to be some combination of those things. So we have to find the area of the triangle. Let's make the triangle first just by connecting the dots. So there's one and two and three, right? So the problem is, right, we know that from the reference chart, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Is, is this the base here? Is this then the height? I mean, that'd be nice because if this is a right angle, then we're all good. But is that a right angle? How would I know? Well, I could think about the slopes of lines. Uh, you know, I have the, um, the, the base has a slope of what? Up one, two, three, four, five, six, six over one. But if I look at the, the slope of the height, that's not what it needs to be. Remember, perpendicular lines can have negative reciprocal, so I need to be negative one sixth. But if I go down one and then over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, different slope. So that is just my long way of telling you it has nothing to do with the lines that we're given. We're not going to be able to think about the base and the height of this triangle as is because they're not perpendicular. I don't know how I'm going to draw a perpendicular line somewhere in here. It, it, it's messy. But I have a bunch of right triangles, which is what I want when I'm doing area, that I can use. Because if we think about it, this triangle is really just part of a larger shape. It is part of a rectangle, right? And so there's a right triangle that's kind of filling in part of the rectangle. We can go over here and we have another one, right? And then if I come over here, there we go, right? So what do we really have? We have that red triangle that we want in the middle, we have these kind of three green triangles that are uh, kind of off to the sides and all of it together is a rectangle. So if I want to get the area of this weird triangle, let's just take the area of the rectangle, really simple, and then subtract out these other triangles that I don't want, which are also really simple because these ones I do know have a right angle because look, they, they kind of fit on the corner. So these are predictable. And that's just a general rule of thumb is we often have what I call shaded region problems where we're trying to find some weird shape, some weird region, but rather than go at it directly, because directly doesn't work or is too crazy, we go at it from the sides, right? We say, okay, let's deal with other simpler shapes that we know. A right triangle is a much simpler shape than any other triangle, because right triangles, we can just do, use the area equals uh, one half base times height formula, because it requires the height and the base be perpendicular to each other. So let's just start with a simple part. Let's get the rectangle. The rectangle is what? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the area of the rectangle is 56. That's the big one. We're gonna then deal with the, the triangles by subtracting them out. So let's go first to uh, this, let's do triangle um, A, B, and C. Okay, so triangle A. Area of A is one half base times height. So the base is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm literally just counting boxes here, guys. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven high. So half of 49 is 24.5, something annoying. 49 divided by two is 24.5. Okay, so that's A, nice. Let's do B, right? So B is also one half base times height. So this time the base is I'm gonna go along the top, I think that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the height is one, so half of eight, that's nice, that's four, cool. And then C, uh, also, one half base times height, I love it. See how simple this is? We're just repeating the same process. Height is, uh, or base is one. Height is one, two, three, four, five, six. Half of six is three. So, let's take our rectangle, subtract out 24.5, subtract out 4, subtract out 3. See, so we get 56 minus 24.5 minus 4 minus 3 is 24.5. So kind of works out nice that it's the same number. That's a little scary, but that is the answer. Done. If you have other ways of doing this, great. I'm happy for you. Um, but to be quite honest, I don't really foresee them being simpler than this because most other explanations to this question require us to memorize more stuff. 
memorize distance formula, things about the triangle area that is very specific to the situation here. We want to memorize less. What did I really need to memorize here? I didn't need to memorize the area of a rectangle. That's on the reference chart. I didn't need to memorize the more traditional area of a uh, triangle formula. And that's in the reference chart. So all I really need to memorize, I guess, is just the concept of a shaded region problem where when we have a weird thing that we can't directly get, we use other more familiar, easier shapes to figure it out. We either build the shape we want or we kind of do this like subtraction thing and find the remainder. Either path is viable, sometimes both are, but in this case we really have to do the subtraction, but it's really easy. So anytime you feel like you've got a shape you can't just figure out on your own, see if there's a way of using other surrounding shapes, surrounding features to get it in this more indirect way. There's a very common solution to what I call shaded region problems. The, the hardest thing about this particular one is they never really gave us a shaded region. We had to make it shaded ourselves, but once we did, it was pretty easy to just do a bunch of areas and do some subtraction.